Hi there, Tim G5TM back for another one. Now I don't know about you, but I really like 10 meters. It's a band that's really opening up now. We're climbing the solar cycle. Uh, lots of opportunity to work DX in the afternoons to North America and also in the morning sometimes to cross even to places like Australia and Japan when the band really opens up. Love 10 meters. We need quite a small antenna and uh, the noise tends, not always, but tends to be a lot lower on 10 than it does on the uh, the lower bands. So I really like it. Now, um, lots of people use things like uh, dipoles and they use uh, verticals on 10 meters. CB antennas will do a good job. The, the antenna I want to look at now, though, is a delta loop. Now, a delta loop you usually work out the length of it by dividing uh, 1005 by the frequency. So you tend to find with a 10 meter version, for the 10 meter band, I should say, you need about 36 feet of wire. Was that about 11 meters or something just under? And the shape we're looking at, because loops can be any shape, it could be square, it could be rectangular. We're looking at an equ equilateral triangle, so three equal sides to a triangle, okay? And uh, each going to be about, what, uh, 11, 12 feet long, something like that. So let's see then what the differences are between a horizontal and a vertically polarized delta loop. Now, with a horizontally uh, polarized delta loop, we'd feed it halfway along the base, Okay, halfway along that bottom bit of the triangle. If we're going to make it vertical, we feed it either in the corner or near one of the corners. So let's have a look then at MMANA and see if we can fire her up and find out what we can find out about uh, delta loops. So we're going to the delta loop uh, file here. Now, as we can see, this version, if you look at the bottom middle there, this is a horizontally polarized delta loop, okay? Um, let's have a look at the far field and let's see what this looks like in terms of DX because most people build delta loops for 10 meters really to work DX for most most cases anyway I think um, so currently they've got this antenna at nearly six meters off the ground let's make it a bit less than that um, let's make it um, minus no, that's not going to do it. Hang on. Let's, let's make it zero. 2.93 meters off the ground. So maybe minus... No, sorry. Let's make it 4.3. There we are. So we've got the antenna at 2.5 meters off the ground, which is a quarter wave. Okay. Um, there we go. Starter up. If you notice, this is a 1.4 to 1 SWR. I'm not bothered about it, but of course, we're measuring it at 200 ohms because uh, effectively a loop would be around 200 ohms. So you need to either bring that in either with a 4 to 1 current balance or with a quarter wavelength of 75 ohm coax minus a velocity factor. But we're not, we're not worried about matching it today. We're looking more at the far field plot. Let's have a look then. And let's have a look at 5 degrees off the horizon. That's our low angle DX, our low angle RF to get DX. Well, it looks very much like a like a, a dipole if you look at the left hand side here, look, because effectively we've got our gain through the middle of the uh delta loop. So it's like a triangle, and through the middle of the actual triangle, as you look at it full on, is where we get our gain. We get our nulls off the edges. And it's just like this with a dipole. But the best we're getting is minus seven point four with quite the horrendous nulls off the side. So that's not exactly a DX machine because your average vertical is going to be better than that, but quite substantially better than that. It's omnidirectionally going to be about minus five, minus five and a half, and this isn't getting anywhere, anywhere near it. So that's not great. So what do we have to do then to make this uh, horizontal delta loop sing? Well, we need to make it a bit higher in the air, really, I think. So let's have a look. If we see if we can... There we are. So the lowest point of the antenna. Oh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, two point. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, seven, I think. There we are. Five meters off the ground. So the antenna is now half a wavelength off the ground. Don't worry about the SWR. Let's look at the far field plots. And again, we'll do five degrees. Minus 1.2. That's better. Uh, but again, we do have this null, but we're better than a vertical, probably down to about here. Look and there so again it's quite directional we're not getting much off the edges we're getting our biggest gain through the middle but we are getting a much improved version we're about 60 b better than we were a quarter wavelength off the ground which is you know it's a, it's a decent difference isn't it now that's that's horizontally polarized let's go back again and let's make this antenna uh so where were we uh, 2.5, so that's minus 0.43. 
But this time what we're going to do is change it. Ooh, let me just currents back in. We're going to change it now. If you look at the bottom here, I'm going to move the source to the end. So what we've now got, oops. There you go. If you look at there, look in the corner, we're now feeding it in the corner, not in the middle. We're now turning this into a horizontally, sorry, vertically polarized delta loop. We now go back to two and a half meters off the ground where we first had the horizontal. And if you remember the best game we had from the horizontally polarized antenna, a quarter wavelength off the ground, which is two and a half meters, was about minus seven and a half. Five degrees off the horizon, minus 3.2. Notice we get a bit less gain the side where we feed it, but we're still at minus 6.7. Now, now we're better than minus 6. We're going right around minus 3.2, uh, minus 5.2. So what, if you notice, that we don't really have those nulls off the edges to the degree that we had with the horizontally polarized one. And in fact, even the worst bit, which is minus 6.7, it's still a half a dB up on the horizontal's best one as a quarter wave off the ground. So at this low height, the vertical spanks the horizontal uh, delta loop. Minus 3.2, that's nice. That's uh, Not only is that about 4 dB better than the horizontal, it's also better than what we'd probably get on the vertical fed at this low to the ground as well. So that's pretty good. Now, what happens if we actually make this even higher and put this up to 5 five meters off the ground like the horizontal one so hang on i've got a bit of uh, maths to do here there we go ah five degrees worst point again is at the feed point minus 4.9 is the worst so we're actually now better than the vertical Minus 4.9 or certainly as good, but look over here, minus, ooh, minus 1 dB, minus 3, minus 1. There you go, and no nulls. So I'm a big fan of the vertical delta loop for the higher bands. You don't need to get it very high at all. A uh, quarter wave above the ground seems to do a decent job. And um, I actually think, you know, that if you can get up that high, half wave out off the ground, further in the corner, that would be great. Mechanically, it's a bit more of a challenge to feed an antenna like that, though, especially if you've got it on a um, fiberglass pole. But even at the, the lower height of about a quarter wave above the ground, the uh, vertical delta loop does a very good job. So there we are. That's quite interesting. And uh, yeah, why don't you build one and see how it goes? Uh, give it a go. There's lots of designs on, on, the, uh, on the interweb. And uh, when the weather gets better in the spring, I might well give it a go myself and uh, try a vertically polarised in the garden. Just a couple of metres above the ground should be a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. If there's another video coming up over there. And if you fancy clicking subscribe and joining, joining aboard the good ship G5TM, then click up there. 7-3 and uh, good luck with 10 metres. All the best. Bye-bye.